everyone welcome to the bad reading podcast i'm atlas novak i'm one of your hosts and uh today the background is definitely fake it's chris hetlinger hello this is my fake background this is my fake plant charlie that's like the realest fake background i've ever seen <laughs> right you're like Very oh. realistic, yeah yeah and our guest I mean, today would... all the way from sacramento heather road Hi, my background is also fake. <laughs> I actually don't know how to make a fake background on Skype yet. This is like, I don't, I've never done a show on Skype before. So this is fun and exciting for me. If you can't tell. Um, if you hover over the little camera logo at the bottom, it'll say choose background effect. And then you can add stuff. Uh, you should not have told me that. <laughs> For a second, it's like, oh, yeah, I put a green screen of a green screen in the background. Yeah. That's what I, I... Well, with shadows and everything, that's some high-tech stuff going on back <laughs> That's right. This isn't even a green screen. This is a tablecloth from the dollar store. So I mean, do what you got to do, man. That's how, uh, This is th- th- my bedroom. Best background ever. This so, is a kitchen. Yeah, it, it, it's like the, the the blinds with the missing piece. If you can see that. Oh, oh yeah. No. <laughs> I have it blurred out, so I can't yeah. tell what's going on. There, it's all white, and then there's like a gray line in the middle there. That's the missing piece. Right oh, there. Oh, cool. <clears throat> but I uh, it was like a piece of artwork, and those were just like it was you know modern art where you just have two yeah. blue lines in the middle of like a canvas of white. Nope, just just crappy, crappy blinds that came with the bedroom that I have not fixed. Um, but uh, yeah, th- this show is uh, brought to you by our patrons at patreon.com slash badreadingpod. Uh, you can help support the show. I'll talk more about that later. But today, we're going to ask our guests like we do every time. Heather Road, what are you into? Um... Well, I'm a bottom, but I can switch. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? I was more talking about, like, books, movies, TV. That list you sent me earlier. Okay, yeah, yeah. no, I'm a gigantic nerd, so I love a lot of sci-fi and fantasy. Um, mostly sci-fi, you know, like uh, Star Wars, um, Star Trek, Dune, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh Rick and Morty, Futurama, you know, I love good sci-fi, especially the funny stuff. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, all the fantasies. Well, and of sci-fi cartoons, the cream of the crop is always going to be Futurama. Yeah. Wait, do you consider uh, Star Wars to be like space fantasy or sci-fi? It's not sci-fi, right? Like, I'm yeah. obviously yeah. in it's space. space fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a tricky one, right? But yeah, um, you got me there. I've been foiled. <laughs> well, no, because you said sci-fi and fantasy, but I just didn't know which category. And even if you were, it's fine. Like just the thing where, as the you know the musty nerd, when someone goes, "Oh, you like sci-fi? You like Star Wars?" You're like, "It's not sci-fi. It's fantasy." Okay. Yeah, I'm not one of those. I yeah. think genres are kind of just there as like names to be like all of this is kind of similar and star wars is yeah. both because it's in space which i know is not like a rule of sci-fi but it's like a generality right mm-hmm. it's like a stereotype For space sure. you know do you think that like we could get people who aren't really into the idea of like gender fluidity or lgbt people if like okay you know how there's like genre bending they're like, yeah, just that, <laughs> but people. I like that description anyway. <laughs> but I don't think they'd go with it because these are the people who are like, Star Wars is not sci fi. Like, they're yeah. going <laughs> to. Yeah, like... they're going to be bad. Maybe. They're not. I mean, even if, like, the weird thing about it is, like, people who like Star Trek but are also weird about that, because I'm like, Star Trek is super progressive. There are dudes wearing dresses in the next generation, and, like, in the original series, there's a bunch of episodes where they're 
against you know racism and bigotry of various kinds and it's like how can you like star trek and also be a bigot i don't oh well <laughs> I, would, I would like to introduce you to my friends dunning and kruger um <laughs> What were you going to say, Heather? I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by your reference that I didn't even get. I don't know enough of it. But no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was just saying that like they're total socialists in Star Trek, right? Like the Federation is like basically a socialist government. So mm -hmm. it's, I mean, and that's how they have like a functional society as opposed to Star Wars where they're like, I don't know, always under threat of some sort of fascist somebody um, always yeah i like how e even in star wars where they're like uh oh yeah we killed the emperor but also there's like still uh empire because we don't know how to write stories kind of it's like after the empire fell there was a giant power vacuum because the the rebellion didn't really have a plan they were just like take down the empire and they were like and now what because you actually need to create a new government when you have one that falls mm -hmm. um as is evidenced by many empires that have fallen over history um and if you don't do it right you end up with just a new fascist government it's just it's not gonna work out so yeah. basically, or... ever like the Star Wars sequels is just that meme from SpongeBob of Plankton going, "I don't know, I didn't think I'd get this far." Yeah, uh, basically. <laughs> um, but that's like eight thousand different tangents. Uh, the story we picked for today is in the realm of Futurama because that was on your list, and I was like, "Oh yeah, it's my time to shine, baby." Um, <laughs> glad that. What? I'm so I'm glad. That one. Good. good, yeah. I, I, I really love Futurama. Um, I love that the entire show is one giant circle. Because, you know, at, like at the end of the last episode, they're like, do you want to go around again? Then they go into the bright flash of light. And then the, uh, oh, yeah. the series reboots. Because, like, the first time that that aired on TV, I was watching it. And the next episode they aired was the pilot. So there's the big flash of light, you know... Executive producer David X. Cohen, and then space. It seems to go on and on forever, and then you get to the end and a monkey starts throwing barrels at you. Like, it's a perfect circle, that entire show. Yeah. I'm just thinking of True Detective now, like, time is a flat circle. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that was a clever way to finish this the show, for sure, definitely. And then it also introduces the whole concept that we're all just in a virtual reality that's inside another hologram that's mm -hmm. inside like another thing you know wait is that what they do on true detective or are we back in futurama oh, no. again? that's back to futurama oh, okay. yeah, yeah futurama. i'll talk about true detective okay just watch that shit i've never <laughs> seen it so i don't know like i i also love the episode where it's the time machine and then it turns out time is literally a flat circle and then oh yeah that may or may not be true there are it's more likely that uh, the universe will end in heat death, but... Can you not be such a downer right now? <laughs> I'm sorry. Astrophysics is something that I'm exposed to on a regular basis because my dad has a PhD in plasma physics, which is a subset of astrophysics because he's way smarter than me. Wait, backseat dad has a fucking degree in astrophysics? A subset of astrophysics, specifically that... about plasma, which is the stuff, you know, that's on... Because stars made of yeah the, the stu stuff that presumably star uh that lightsabers are made of but if they were really made of that they would like evaporate everything around them immediately the, the stuff that Mega Man shoots out of his cannon yes <laughs> um, <laughs> all right so this here uh story we found uh it's on fanfiction.net it's called breaking up is hell by someone called bobeca forever four dash six dash ninety eight um, we will put the link to the story in the show notes, both to give the artist credit and if you want to check it out for yourself. Um, the little description at the beginning is, Leela has feelings for the robot devil, so she leaves Fry and gets with the robot devil. Tame in terms of romance does feature some curse words. So I actually am Bobeka, but I was drunk when I wrote this, so go ahead. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm waiting for the day where like we we get the fan fiction writer and like stumble upon their thing from like ten years ago. We're like, oh man, I forgot about that. Oh yeah. god. I have written some fan fictions in my life. I've, I've shipped some people, not going to lie. Really? What what fan fictions have you written? Well, I, I'm not proud of this, but I've <laughs> written some Harry Potters in my day. Okay. Which which ships? Oh, I was just, I don't know. Um, I'm mostly imaginary characters, you know, okay. but obviously... I'm, like I, I rewrote Ron and Hermione and made it made it more believable just because it was kind of like oh god it was so weird yeah. yeah I didn't like it they had no chemistry I would like to reread your actual maybe they had chemistry at one point fic to make it make more sense because god they had no chemistry yeah they needed to have yeah exactly I also rewrote the prequels to Star Wars but not entirely I just outlined it you know that's pretty much what I fix things in my spare time I'm like this is terrible I rewrote Batman once like the the trilogy um the Nolan trilogy or uh, <laughs> nice there were some gaping errors it was great but there were some some flaws going on <laughs> you know I just imagine you rewriting the prequels and you're like, let's take that sand monologue and like expand it by 20 minutes. So. <laughs> that's really the basis of the whole story. That's <laughs> that's how Anakin fell to the dark side is he just, the sand drove him nuts. You know, it's itchy. I it's mean, like, I can't stand it anymore. And he kills a bunch of kids because he's just itchy all the time. You it know? gets everywhere, including the dark side. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, breaking up is hell. Notes, I ship Lilo with the robot devil, so here's a fanfic where they get together. Disclaimer, I only own the story itself, none of the characters and places. Chapter 1, Lilo realizes something. It was a beautiful day in New New York, and Taronda Lilo was walking down to the Planet Express building, thinking about Fry. She and him have been dating for a few weeks, and the man was still a bit immature. She loved Fry, but she did despise some things about him. She, sh she soon begins to think about Fry's opera and how she unwittingly signed a form saying that she'd give the robot devil her hand in marriage. She actually then begins to think about what might have happened if Fry didn't give the robot devil what he wanted. <laughs> Glad all the exposition is here. Way to tell and not show. Like, that part's important, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the, the first rule of writing is tell, don't show. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Where was that actually brought up? Like, there was some show that made a reference. I was like, that's the first rule of uh, writing. Tell, not show, right? I feel like that, <laughs> that, that joke has probably been done, like, you know. Uh, five million well, times. They invented it, and then they fixed, like, when time went back around in the circle, then they stole my jokes from the future, is what happened. Oh, man. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I actually have a vague subscription to that belief that, like, it's all one big circle because you ever get deja vu and then well, you should watch true detective um <laughs> but yeah no but i mean the the kind of like actually thinking that you when you get deja vu it's when an old timeline lines up with something you did beforehand That's physiologically a... i can tell you what deja vu actually is but i won't ruin uh, your belief no, no 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 you know what you know what go for it Crush um, me. <laughs> the most widely subscribed to, or one of the most widely subscribed to uh, beliefs is that that occurs when your brain is processing something and it goes through one pathway a little bit faster than another one. Mm -hmm. um, so because you process something a little bit more quickly in one part of your brain, it's already there. So your brain is like, oh, this has already happened to me because it kind of already has in one part of your brain. Um so that's one of the one of the many physiological ways that deja vu can be a real thing. And also, my dog is squeaking a toy because he's very happy. It's okay. Hooray for Scruffles. <laughs> he's like trying to drown out this horrible mind blower from the audience. He's, you cannot know the truth. Of what deja vu like, is. No, yeah. no you can't. Deja vu is a real thing. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know enough about neurology to, like, disagree with you. So I'm just going to go, okay, fine. It passes through one pathway faster than the other. And then it's, like, waiting. That makes that makes sense. When I experience deja vu, it's kind of like 
yeah it's kind of it's it's kind of like just feels weird right it just feels like whoa this is familiar you know you heard it on the internet it must be true your brain's also really really good at recognizing patterns and that's that's another like uh, more wibbly wobbly explanation or it's just like because your brain as a human is so good at recognizing patterns you're just like oh i've seen this before even though it's something that is a novel experience right that's the theory i've heard is that it's just that it's like so similar to another memory that it syncs up or something like that and creates mm-hmm. that familiarity but you can't quite place it you know it could be a mixture of of the things it could also be that we're living a time loop and I that be- we're not going to experience heat death <laughs> want the magical one that allows me to live forever so let's just go with that i like that one better too to be honest (laughs) we're gonna have to bring her around again (laughs) um let's see okay leela knows that uh she would have went to robot hell with the robot devil she thinks about how it would be if she uh did live there with him maybe the robot devil would be a gentleman but it seemed to be out there uh, she then realizes that she must be in love with the robot devil. She knew Fry would be upset about this, but she does need to tell him. The fucking switch between present and past tense is giving me a fucking aneurysm right now. <laughs> Welcome you to know, my life as an editor. Right, I, I exactly. I used to be a writing tutor, and I'd have to go through that with people's essays all the time. And so for me, like, my brain just goes, ah, as well, you know, just like, no, that's, don't do that. But, yep. Whatever. It's not my, you know, it's already out there in the world, Bobeka. Um. <laughs> you can do better than this. C minus. Uh, <laughs> she didn't want to leave Fry, though, so she decided not to tell him right away. End of chapter one. Um, so a lot of these are, like, real short, so we can burn through them pretty quick. Chris, you want to go next? Sure. Let me get to chapter two. Chapter two. Cleverly titled, The Robot Devil Has Feelings for Leela. Meanwhile, in Robot Hell, we find the robot devil in the office using his computer. He was feeling down. He wanted a female in his life. Okay. Um, he had tried his luck at being with fem- the fembots that were there, but none of them liked him back. He even tried with humans and aliens, but it was no use. He remembered when Fry had his, ha- had his hands and how he almost married Sharunga Leela to get to him. Now the robot considers doing this again, but the man wouldn't want to trade anytime soon. The horned robot did like Leela now. He was looking at pictures of her on his computer. The robot had intentions of telling the lady, but he didn't know when or where he'd meet up with her. He Wait. wanted to be alone with her. So- he doesn't know how he's going to meet her. Now we got some tension going on. I'm into it. <laughs> I'm I'm more interested in the, like, I have feelings for this person, so I'm just going to look at pictures of them on my computer like when you facebook stalk somebody it you don't do it for very long it's like you you just check to see if they posted anything new and then like he already knows who leela is i don't he doesn't need to be doing this research he's like am am i wrong or i don't know because i mean the like how bad of a stalker is he like how obsessed is he you know is is she like is has she been his only spank bank material down in hell you know (laughs) he looks her up every time he gets lonely and he wants to dream of something better than the fembots and whatnot you know actually come to think of it i know satan is supposed to be the uh, arbiter of hell in whatever sort of story he's in but does he get to like like is he subject to all the same things that the people in hell are also subject to? Does he get tortured by other demons or is he just kind of there? He's there. He's the well, it depends on which uh version you subscribe to. Um but generally yep. speaking, I mean like in Norse mythology we have Hela who presides over um, in Dante's Inferno, for some reason, Satan is frozen in ice, so I guess he's kind of subject to the same things that other yeah, others right. are. What is the astrophysicist perspective, though? What is, what is Satan <laughs> under that? Uh, it, it, it's, it, religion isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> I want to believe in something, but I can't. I try real hard. 
And in the end, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Um. I didn't even get very far, though. That was very poetic. You should make it into a song or something. Yeah, and, and then immediately get sued by Linkin Park. It'll be awesome. <laughs> I don't think that they have enough money to sue anyone anymore. They haven't. When, when have they done anything? In the I mean, last... Chester's dead, so. Yeah. They'll, they wow. probably just get, you know. Their their bank accounts are going to be buoyed by angsty twelve year olds until the end of time. Um, That's very true. Just new just like just a... them, or maybe. I... Oh, I go know. ahead. I was saying because I was into Lincoln Park. I grew out of it. I still have like some kind of nostalgic respect for them because mm-hmm. you know an angsty twelve year old once. But I Who feel like it? the new kids. <laughs> it was awesome. It was the best. Yeah. best time of my life um but i feel like there's like new angsty bands for kids now you know and they're all listening to like folk punk and stuff like that or i don't know if my chemical romance or panic are still cool but i think panic still is um i don't think my chemical romance is i think they become too much of a meme but i think maybe because umbrella academy came out they might be making a comeback because Ooh, gerard yeah. ray huh. wrote yeah Forgot about that. I think everyone's anticipating a comeback from from my chemical romance, you know. I I really liked Umbrella Academy. I liked the second season a bit better, but I, I liked that. Yeah. We should do both fan fictions, but no, get back to the story. I'm okay. really interested. <laughs> I want my hands back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um he wanted to be alone with her when he tells her how he feels. He knew that if he told her while Fry was around, the man would tell him to back off and that the woman was his girlfriend. Why is, he, why is he afraid of Fry? Yeah. I don't know. This is a good question. No one's afraid of Fry. It's Fry. And, like, not even it's Fry. It's he's the robot devil. And he's a human. <laughs> like, a human that lacks the Delta brainwave, but that doesn't necessarily give him th- that many. I mean, it's clearly know. against character, right? The robot devil just power levels aside just doesn't he's not he's he's a cocky motherfucker he doesn't care about it and you can bleep that if you want but yeah. he doesn't care and like he's not he's not intimidated by other dudes yeah the, the only reason the only reason he couldn't like just take his hands back was because he had signed a contract and that's like mm-hmm. i think beyond his power realm level that's, whatever that is the other thing about like most iterations of the devil is they have to they have to follow contractual bargains mm. in various religions. They have to always, they have like some definitive, they're always like lawful evil. They follow a rule set. Mm. Like the fourth law of physics right there. You know? <laughs> the devil is always lawful evil. Yeah. <laughs> what, what would you be on that, uh, the alignment chart, you think? I'm chaotic good. Uh, hell yeah, like Robin Hood. Steal from the rich, give to the poor. Exactly. Exactly. I've got a strong moral compass, but I have no qualm how I get there. You know what I mean? Um, That's also, you know the means justify, or the ends justify the means is also the other good way of saying chaotic good. Yeah, I see, but I also think that that gets a little bit shaky, right? Because, the, you know, Sometimes they don't. For one thing, you can't guarantee what the outcome's going to be, and then you might have just done a bunch of bad shit for no reason. And might That's not very work true. Out. So, and it really is what does the Bhagavad Gita say? <clears throat> to a person belongs only their labor, never the fruit of it, right? So it really is about putting your best foot forward, not about what outcome you get out of it. However, being chaotic good, I believe that um, I have free range regarding what actions I take, as long as I remember that it's really about the action toward good and not about what I reap out of it, you know? Because mm-hmm. opportunism is also like, you know, <clears throat> I, can't, I can't remember what you call the two things, but um, the two types of morality that they kind of separate into, um, dietological and what's the other one? But, I mean, opportunism is like... Really, this is a philosophy podcast. Get back to the story. I don't know. Okay, care. fine. Um, <laughs> I, I remember what, what Koberg's, uh, like, his 
three like precepts of what is it morality like he has the the pre-conventional conventional and post-conventional but that's a whole different thing that's like with development and how most people never get to post-conventional which is like extra empathy and having like a universal belief or essentially the other one is like treat others literally how you would like to be like have have empathy for other people and sometimes a fair few people never get there which is really sad <laughs> like understand where people are coming from and then like, treat someone in a situation in the way that is best for humanity at large as opposed to beneficial for directly you what is it called post-conventional it's uh yeah that's post-conventional so he has pre-conventional conventional and post-conventional the only reason i know this is because i'm studying an amount of psychology for an exam that i'm going to take that will remain nameless for the time being until i take it just be just in case i fail <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, even on that. I'm neo post-conventional so <laughs> i'm i'm a pisces so <laughs> I don't believe in astrology. Me neither. Um, I was just fucking. My Mercury's in Capricorn, so that means I don't believe in astrology. Um, <laughs> I kind of don't care either. Anyway, uh, chapter three. Leela tells Fry about how she likes the robot devil. Can I mean, I read chapter three. What? Can I just read chapter three? Chapter three. You described it right. Yeah, well, uh, to, to quote the episode that this entire story is referencing, you can't just have your characters declare how they feel. That makes me feel angry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, normally, it, it's just supposed to be, like, the two co-hosts doing it, but it, if you want to do it, go for it. Um, yeah, but... go ahead. So Fry is cooking bacon with his shirt off. <laughs> Wait, what? This is gonna go free verse. It's gonna be better than this shit. No. And Leela comes in wearing a towel from the shower. And <laughs> nothing else. By the way, I'll let your imagination wonder what they were up to. But Fry turns to Leela, he says, Do you want bacon? But she knew he meant more than just bacon. <laughs> And then suddenly everything lights up on fire and the robot... Okay, you know, just okay. reach out. All right. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Leela is now on a mission with Fry and Bender. They are heading to Mars. She knew that this was uh, would be the best time to tell Fry about how she likes the robot devil now. As she believed... <laughs> That's like the worst time. You're stuck in a little like room with somebody for several days. I get the feeling that whoever wrote this is like in middle school. Mm. And like yeah. this is how that like I like this this boy now. I'm gonna tell <laughs> you while we're stuck inside together. I always want to break up with someone though. If I've been stuck with them in a small room on a long space voyage for like months on end, I'm like, okay, I'm sick of this person. I'd rather fuck the devil than this person right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was gonna say, wait, you mean like during COVID when we're all stuck inside together? Exactly. Huh. You imagine the people who broke up with their spouses like right before or their partners like right before COVID happened and they hadn't even moved out yet. They just knew they hated each other and then That that was literally a problem and then there were a lot uh there were a lot of divorces that happened as a result of people being stuck together because they realized that they weren't uh as compatible as they may have initially believed. Yeah. Man, COVID is like the ultimate like put up or shut up for relationships. Mm -hmm. You can make it through COVID with someone. Y'all are indomitable, you know? Yeah. Together forever. Or Together. You're soulmates with that one. That means I'm soulmates with my dog. I'm I'm soulmates with my weighted blanket, by that logic. <laughs> I love you, weighted blanket. All right. Um. <laughs> what? My soulmate is alcohol. That's not a bad place to be, I guess. Um, uh, as she, it likes the robot devil now, as she believed that when they arrive, Bender would probably hang out with the robots in the robot house again. When they arrive, Bender does as Leela thought, so this gave her a chance to be alone with Fry. While heading to the dean's office, uh, Leela looks at uh, Fry, who is carrying a package, and says, uh, Do you want to be Leela? Or... Uh, sure. 
Uh, I forget what we listen. on. Oh, God, it's been so long since I watched Futurama. Uh, Do a Katie Seagal impression. I don't know. Was that the, the actress who voiced her? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, right, because she was also... Um, She's the uh, mom the motorcycle show. Sons of She's Anarchy. Also- She's yeah. the mom in um, in Brooklyn Nine Nine too, and oh, the yeah. and uh, married with children. I've I'm never heard of it. No. It was, yeah. There, there's even like a reference on Futurama to married with children, where she like kind of dresses up as Peg Bundy, a little bit, <laughs> and she's like, "Al, I did my hair the way you wanted it." And it's like part of the same hair. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I remember that one. Yeah. Okay. That's like that's a giant married with children reference. That whole episode. I yeah. didn't know that, yeah. but good to know now. Um, she sounds pretty normal though. You can just do your normal voice if you want to. Um, Fry, I have something to tell you. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. This was, that was not the sentence. Fry, I have to tell you something. It's important. Fry looks at her and tells her to go ahead, and then she asks him. Wait, what? She didn't write. The author did not write any lines for Fry. Just, just because apparently, just fuck dialogue. Yeah. Uh, you remember when the robot devil tried to marry me, right? How could I forget? I had to surrender his hands just to keep him from doing so. Fry tells her. Oh, so now he gets dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she rubs the back of her neck with his uh, left hand and says, "This will be a shock." I actually have begun to have feelings for him now. What? Why? Fry asks, astonished. I don't actually know. I think it might just be feelings of pity, but I'm not sure. She tells him. Hilarious. That was a great (laughs) joke. Keep going. (laughs) Fry grabs uh, her right hand with his free hand, uh, looks her deep in the eyes and says, but I thought you loved me. I do. But now it's back to friend love. (laughs) Oh, um, okay. Uh, I plan on telling the robot devil at some point about my feelings. Okay, so this is how I imagine... Wh- uh, this is how I imagine Bo Becker writing this story. She goes, I do, type, 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 but now it's back to friend love. I plan on telling... Bo Becker, did you study for your math test tomorrow? I will, Mom. The robot devil at some <laughs> point about my feelings. Yep. Awesome. Uh, She tells the man, once they arrive at the dean's office, Fry puts the package on his desk, and Dean Vernon thanks them. While heading back to the ship, Fry begs Leela to stay with him, but she tells him that she doesn't have the same feelings for him that she used to. Once aboard the ship, Bender looks at Fry and Leela and asks if anything happened while uh, he was hanging with the robot house, to which Fry cries and say, uh, says Leela's leaving him for the robot devil. That is so Bender to be interested in what other people were doing. Keep right. Going. I'm getting really interested in this. It's really starting to pull me in. Yeah, this, this is totally on character and uh, not full of exposition. The exposition makes it worth it. Like, rule number two is what you said. Fuck dialogue, you know? It's really, <laughs> it gets in the way of the story. Because then you got to take time writing quotes. You know, who wants to write quotes? Like, it takes it takes a minute to add that quote in. And all those commas and periods. We don't, yeah, have, we don't have time so for that. Punctuate. So much punctuation. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Write it like an outline, you know, just summarize what you want the story to say, and then that's perfect. Um, Dude, you know what, this, this actually kind of reads like someone trying to tell you about your friend's breakup. So, like, we were on the ship together, and then I told Fry that I only like him as a friend now, and then he started to cry and was like, please stay with me, and then I told him to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean... I guess that's about that's about right. <laughs> All right, uh, chapter four. Have at it. <laughs> All right, chapter four. Leela tells the robot devil. Where's the tension though? Like, okay, so can't can't like 
can't they be in their best spot and then the robot devil comes and he's like sorry to interrupt everything but i love you leela and then leela has to be like conflicted between the two like she's pretty much already moved past fry you know what i mean and it's yeah. kind of just the way for this already we the audience know that it's a mutually requited love with no obstacles whatsoever so. <laughs> there's it's that very, well, there's no tension there's no drama there's no there's tension no and like the robot devil is kind of he's kind of being a whip about the whole thing he's like i like her but i i don't want to put any effort into it so out of character he she just... likes fry it's fine <laughs> Yeah, what he would do is he would come up with an like incredible contract, right? Mm -hmm. That's his character, he, was, he would make a deal, you know, for a date, you know, like... With Lila. Like, pay for dinner and then see where it goes. I don't know. You should have checked the wording in the fine print. <laughs> and I was initially going to make a joke about, like, this... Uh, this writer obviously shipping Persephone and um, and Hades, but now I seriously doubt that this person knows anything about mythology. I don't know what to tell you. I don't. I don't think there's. We're probably reading too deep into it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's been a while since uh, we've had a story on bad reading that's just just terrible. <laughs> it has. This Amazing story, you guys. I don't know what you're talking about. I, love it. Okay. I am tired of all of these stories where the where the characters can't just get exactly what they want right off the bat, where they have to have full length conversations with each other. Like, no, it's not where they where they do things in character. Like that just gets in the way of the story, you know. Let's see how long you can keep that bit up as the story continues. <laughs> not a bit. This is how I really feel. <laughs> you can't say or whatever. I already, I already did that joke. Uh, <laughs> let's keep it moving. The next day. Uh, the next day, Leela heads to the theme park in New Jersey where Robot Hell is located. When she arrives in Robot Hell, she is sitting next to the robot devil who is practicing with his band. He yells, at, he yells at the band, then he sees Leela and stutters out, L Leela, what a surprise! That was a good impression. I have come to tell you something. I mean, judging yeah. on everything else that you've said before this, I'm guessing that my impression is terrible then. <laughs> that was a great impression. Um, uh, Chris, uh, work on yours. Um, I, don't, I don't know what Leela sounds like. I cannot bring it up in my head. But I, I do better if I'm if I'm doing something that's exaggerated as opposed to someone who's semi normal and she's the most normal out of everyone. That's true. Except for the one eye. I do it, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good Leela quote even to work off of to start like as a basis. Um what's a what's a notable Leela line? Like Whatever it is, it's twenty times heavier than a boot. Yeah. Well, Whatever. Well, yeah. No, it's that. I can't do it either. I'm not. I'm not gonna try. I'm just gonna embarrass myself. I'm just gonna make. I'm just gonna critique Chris's impression. All the all the Nick fans are out there. Like he could have pulled it off. And easier to be a hater. <laughs> no, Nick is our is our other co-host who's an impressionist, and he's like he's damn good at it. Um. Yeah, he is. Um, I was. I'm gonna do a what like the Brooklyn accent, like. The, the the girl like the the girl who's who works at the at the hair shop like that kind of accent hey well done <laughs> thank you hey going now i'm getting really in i can't wait to hear it oh should i just do that for lilo's voice from now on yeah i guess yeah. so yeah go for oh, it okay <laughs> i've come to tell you about begin having feelings for you oh god okay <laughs> you have Ask, ask the horned robot. She nods. The robot then says, Oh. Ever yeah, since I tried to marry you, I've had feelings for you. He then leans his head closer, closer to hers and says before kissing her, You're quite intriguing. What the heck? 
Leela closes her eyes and kisses the robot back. The robot pulls away and asks if she is left try, to which she nods. And he wraps his other arm around her back, smiles and says, I've waited for a woman like you for so long. Leela smiles more, looks him in the eyes, and soon kisses him. She pulls him away after seconds and asks if he's head out for a date. He tells her that he was just about to ask the same question. End of chapter four. Wow, things are getting hot. <laughs> are we gonna see some robot dick? Like I, I, I am okay. I'm anticipating this. I'm on the edge of my seat right now. I'm still of the theory that this was written by a middle schooler. The understanding of the romance, the fact that like how they think it's gonna work is Lila walks into hell because apparently you can do that, and then you can. In, in Futurama. Yeah, but, so, like, it's like a whole thing with the carnival rides and stuff. Like, that's know, they, true. They made it sound like it's just, like, the last door on the left or something. Maybe there is an easy way and they just took the hard way. I don't know. But, like, there's that. There's the thing where you just walk and be like, I like you. I like you, too. Like, that's how they expect it's going to work and then it never does in real life. That sometimes is how it happens in middle school, I, mm. I think. I don't know. I didn't hit puberty until I was 14, so I kind of didn't get the experience of, like, mutual crushes. Well, also, I didn't get the anime -er. That's all I'm going to say. Uh <laughs> I remember, like, wanting to, like, I remember just, like, like, wanting to die. Just, like, oh, my God, I can't talk to this person and tell them how I feel. Like, I would, like... I would like hide my crushes from people and then and then find out years later that they had a crush on me too. That's you know, the that's, worst. <laughs> that's how love worked for me in middle school. It was great. They'd be like sending me an I am like, I would have gone out with you. Why didn't you ask me out? And I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the thing where, where like you try and salvage it. I would have gone out with you if you asked me out. Like, well, do you want to now? Like, still right, single. Yeah, I mean, no, because they only tell you now that there's no more tension, right? Exactly. Like, no, I'm married to my yeah. dog. You know, <laughs> to my dog. I'm married to a dog. <laughs> yeah. I mean... No, I just think he was a friend now. You yeah. Know? <laughs> oh my god. All right. Uh, chapter five, first date. The next morning, Lila wakes up, gets dressed, does the rest of her morning routine. <laughs> <laughs> What's the morning routine? That's a good rule of threes right there. So <laughs> following, she woke up, she got dressed, she did her morning routine. I don't know what, it, this is something grownups do, okay? Like, do you, do you like, generally what I do is I, I get, I wake up, I get out of bed before I get dressed for one thing. Um, then I brush. <laughs> they should have listed every single little thing. She woke up, she opened her eyes. She thought about her dream for 15 minutes until <laughs> until the neighbors got too loud and she couldn't focus anymore. So then she groaned and got out of bed and <clears throat> started her coffee and waited for her coffee to finish brewing while she just kind of sat on a chair looking at the floor going, not another day. <laughs> um, and then they turned on the shower and then farted way too loud for that early in the morning. And you're like, and dude, it's too early. Cool. So they tested the water, but it was too cold. Yeah. And so they tested it again. And then it was finally warm enough. So then they got in the shower, but then they forgot. I don't know. Um, they forgot to get a towel. So they had to get out of the shower and go grab a towel and put it on the rack and then get back in the shower. And then they washed their hair first. And then they applied the conditioner, but they left it in there so that they could then let the conditioner do it, do its thing while they were putting soap on their body. I mean, I, I'm I'm one of those weird people who brushes their teeth in the shower, and apparently that's... that's... Different. I like to make breakfast in the bathtub. That's cause... different. Well, just because the toaster adds an element of danger. Right, you know? right. <laughs> you, like, you, you like to hover it over the bath water and then, like, hope right. you slip just a little bit? Yeah, and then what I do is I'll toast, like, a good raisin bagel in the morning because I hate myself, you know, and I want to torture myself. Dude, raisin bagels are the shit. What are you talking about? We cannot be friends now. That was it. That's the political line, okay? That's the line that you draw? I don't know how you feel about Black Lives Matter, but I know that now we cannot be 
sometimes. They do. They do, in fact, matter. Yes. Okay, uh, that's good. That's a good yeah. bonus. But the the ra- like the raisin bagel thing, oof, I cannot. Dude, like, that's morality right there. No, the worst ones are the hair. fucking onion bagels. I don't know what what. What onion bagels are the best? Are you kidding me? With a good salmon spread. Okay, the lox is good. I, I, I just can't. I can't do onion with bagels. I just doesn't doesn't hit right. Chris, what break, break the tie for us? Who who's correct in bagel opinions? Well, I hate I hate raisin bagels. Fuck. Um, right. But also, I can't eat onions because I I'm allergic to onions. So, but that's because they're so good that. <laughs> That like, your body is like fuck this and yeets them it out must, of your body. For, it's 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 an intolerance. Technically, it's not an allergy. So my body is just like I must purge the entirety of whatever is in my system after I eat uh, anything onions. that's made of, made with onions. So. Yeah, so, so it just it, it yeets your entire digestive system. And... Yep. <laughs> your body hates onions, and your mind and your head and your tongue hates the raisin. Okay. Yeah, I actually uh, I like onions in uh, most things unless the power like unless it's overpowering because I'm not used to it. But yeah. if it's like a nice onion flavor, I really do like it, which is really sad because I eat it sometimes. And I'm like, this is good. What what is different about this? And then I look at the box or something. I'm like, ah oh, shit. And you're <laughs> and like, like it's the day shitty. <laughs> and you're like, oh no. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I guess call that a draw then. Because you like onions, but you also don't like them, you know, so. I don't like the effects of them. All right. We'll just call it a draw. We need to get back to this enticing story. I really want to know what happens on their date. All Is right. it going to have some, you know, fun time? <laughs> uh, so she does the rest of her morning routine and then heads off to the Planet Express building. Once she's right outside of the building, she sees Fry, who goes over to her and says, Leela, Please tell me that you and the robot devil aren't together yet. She looks at him and tells him that they are. This makes the man groan and yell out, Damn it! The two then enter the building and head to the conference room. Once there, they see Amy talking to Hermes. Bender was sitting in a chair smoking and drinking, and Zoidberg had his head in the fridge. The professor then walks in carrying a small package, and he then says, Good Good news, news, everyone! Go for it. Good news, everyone. Okay. <laughs> yeah, be the professor. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. We've got a package to bring to the robot devil. Bender then looks at Farns- Farnsworth, stops smoking, and then says, What does he want? The professor says, He needs new formal wear as he accidentally knocked his previous formal wear into a fire pit. Fry thinks this. Maybe I can talk the robot devil out of being with Leela. <laughs> <laughs> Leela takes the package and says Consider this package delivered <laughs> As Leela, Bender, and Fry are heading to the theme park Where Robot Hell is located in Bender says Leela, how did uh, Did you and the Robot Devil talk yet? Yes, and we're together now I'm sorry, I can't That's do a good Bender it is. Yeah. Fry sighs Bender puts his left arm around his best friend And says, no worries, meat bag we'll fi- You'll find someone else <laughs> See, that's in character, at least. That was the most in-character thing in this entire story (laughs) so far. Fry sighs again, telling the robot, there will never be another woman like Leela. Later, after Leela gets off from work, she exits the building and sees her lover sitting on a bench. uh, He looks over at her, stands up, goes over to her and says, Ah, Leela, I've been waiting for you. Are you ready for our date? She nods and tells him that she is. (laughs) They then head to Elzar's. Once inside, they set it at an open table. Elzar comes over and asks what they would like to eat. Leela smiles and says that she'd like the special, and the robot devil tells him that he'll just have some oil and wine. What were you going to say? Or is just saying the special sounds kinky. <laughs> Things are heating up. She's getting the special. You know, it's really I got the special. Bam! Going oh. somewhere. There's I don't... Right with Fry thinking he's he's gonna do something. There's a nice B story going on now, <laughs> so we're gonna see what happens. Do do generally people call each other like lovers before they've like banged? Because literally they haven't gone on a date yet. I don't think anybody yeah, refers to any significant right. other as like a lover. It's usually like ironically so, like oh we're lovers. Or like, 
I've heard it used unironically before. I haven't. I mean, it, it, or it's like a pet name like Babe or Sweetie or Honey or whatever. Lover. Oh, that would be a weird pet name. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard it used a couple of times. It does not... It, it It's a very 40s way of referring to... I, I could uh, see it being like 40s. I'm not very into pet names myself in general. Me neither. It's, I like uh, to call people by their full name. When I'm... <laughs> So like, you, so if you were dating me, you would be like Atlas Novak. Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, "Come here, Atlas Novak." Take which is, me. Which is funny because like one of my pet peeves is when two people are already talking and they use your name in a sentence to address you, even though you're already engaged with the person. Oh, does that is that is that, is that one of your pet peeves, Atlas Novak? See what I mean? Yeah, it, it just comes off like kind of uh, like used cars salesman y to me. Can I say Atlas is like an amazing name? Thank is you. it your is it your real name? It is my real name. Yes. It, I mean, I think it's honestly that's like a really cool. I've known trans men and like non non binary folk who have named themselves Atlas. Um, Wait, seriously? Because- awesome name yeah dude like I, i've never met another atlas in real life it's always been either like you know the titan or that horrible ayn rand book or <laughs> the the dude from bioshock or uh, this one van company among other things but it just sounds so strong right like atlas you know plus the myth is a strong he's pretty strong in, in the mm-hmm. story I mean, tell that to my middle school bully who came up with the nickname Assless Nocock, which to this day is like the best insult that anyone has come up with for me ever. I, that was that's a pretty good one, a- Assless Nocock. Yeah. Um, the the second half is a little contrived off of Novak. I feel like you know you could have done better than that, like new badge or something. But that is pretty good. I mean, like where your middle school, you're like twelve, thirteen. He he was working with. He he made good use of what he was working with. I think. As did this author. <laughs> um. All right, uh, Elzar nods and heads off. The robot devil puts his right hand on the table and looks lovingly at Leela, who puts her right hand on top of his and says... Uh, Boris says, oh, I love you. You can't just just say... (laughs) God, that quote just keeps coming up. That makes me feel angry. (laughs) I love you too, the robot devil tells her. After finishing their meals, the two uh, lovers head to Leela's apartment. Uh, once they're standing in front of the building, Leela takes the robot's left uh, hand and says, Oh, right, I was doing a different act with this. Huh? I had a great time. The robot devil pushes her against the outside wall and says flirtatiously before kissing his lover, I did too, but our date doesn't have to end now. Leela kisses back, wrapping her arms around the robot, who pulls away and says, uh, uh, I think it's me. Like, okay. Lila kisses back, wrapping her arms around the robot. Who pulls away and says, yeah, it's me. I could okay. spend the night here. Lila smiles and asks him. But don't you have work to do in robot hell just in case the robot dies at night? That hasn't happened yet, my dear. I doubt it will happen tonight. Lila smiles and tells the robot. All right, you can spend the night, my love. Okay. This has turned into Harley Quinn. I don't know why. Nothing wrong with that. I guess. With it. Just roll with it. This is yeah. great. I mean, this. This... <laughs> okay, so s- s- spending the night on the first date is usually frowned upon, but she, like, this is literally Satan, and she's like, right. you know what, I'm gonna spend the night with him on the first date. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they already know each other, too. Like, there's something to be said about if you, like, if it's somebody who you've known for a long time and you were like friends for a long time before and suddenly it comes out that you two mutually like each other and then you spend the night on the first date, it's the first date but you two have known each other for a long time. I guess so. Speaking of which, where are their feelings come? Like, why are they not talking about, you know, have they been thinking about each other this whole time? 
Like they're being so wooden. They're just like, I like you. I like you too. I love you. I love you too. Can I spend the night? Yes, you can. You know, like, it's like, what about all of their history together? Isn't it a little bit complicated? What have they been doing since then? How have their feelings evolved over time? You know, like, <laughs> you know, it, it gets worse because the next chapter is titled Zap doesn't believe Leela. Please let me be Zap Brain again. I've been working on his voice. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be that bad again. All right. Um, okay. The next morning at Robot Arms Apartments, we find Fry waking up and saying, I can't believe Leela left me for that evil metal dork. Bender opens the door, walks over to Fry, and says, Fry, I'm going to help you find a new woman. I, as I told you yesterday, there isn't another woman like Leela, Fry sternly says. Fry goes into the bathroom and brushes his teeth. <laughs> the two friends soon arrive at the Planet Express building and see Leela and the robot devil kissing. This makes Fry sigh. Once the two lovers depart, Leela tells the robot that she'll see him after work. Fry goes over to the robot devil and says, I loved Leela first. <laughs> Leela grabs the man's arm and says, Fry, I still like you, but just as a friend. The robot devil heads off, and Leela, Fry, and Bender enter the building. Bender and Fry go to the TV room. Uh, once there, they sit on the couch and turn on the TV and begin watching The Scary Door. <laughs> Leela enters the conference room. The professor looks at her and tells her, Ah, Leela! Good timing! We've got a package to deliver to Captain Brannigan! Leela sighs. She hated seeing Zap. He was always flirtatious. She knew she uh, he wouldn't care, if she'd told him that she's dating the robot devil. She then asks, Why not let Fry and Benda make the delivery? Still young. Those two? If either of them follow ship, I'll have repairs to make. She groans. It was true. Neither by Fry nor Bender could fly the ship well. So she says, Fine. Okay, I think this is what pisses me off the most about the characterization of Leela. She's a feminist. She's not. There's, there's no characterization. I mean, sure. But yeah. Fantastic. This is exactly what Lila would say because she wouldn't want to see that. She just wants to go. You know what upsets me is that they skipped over the lovemaking scene between the robot devil and her. Like that was where it was gonna get spicy. And they just went on to, no, 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 now we're going to watch Fry brush his teeth and sigh and complain. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm not down for. Like, that's the one thing I was looking forward to, and we skipped over it, and now I'm just, I don't care. what I don't I don't care about what's going to happen next with Zap. Who cares? Zap is not part of what. We had a great love triangle going, and now we're making it a love square, like a love <laughs> quadrant. Like, let's just throw Kip into the mix and make Kip and Leela shift, or let's have Kip screw Fry. Who cares? Like, it's all in the air now. No one's got any character motivation whatsoever, so anything could happen. Just so angry my... stuff is being thrown around. I'm just, like, slamming my feet, my fists into the table right now. I'm so frustrated. <laughs> Why did they skip the lovemaking scene? I wanted that! How... how... He doesn't even have junk. What do they do for love making? You don't know that. They, you know they, that. um, something. Bender dates Amy for a little while, so that's a thing that happens. Yeah. I always so, assumed. I don't know. It was just he was performing oral on her or something. What? Yeah, you can always use a robot sex toy. Like lesbians make love without having, you know, junk, like in the, in the penile sense. You know, oh. you just find other things and you make do you can like you're a robot i'm sure you can like attach a sex toy you know and make it give it rotaries and gears and all sorts of stuff like it, you're a robot also well, electro guess... play like it would be super easy because a robot already has access to that right exactly you know yeah you could do that electro play which i think is probably Leela's thing, considering how frizzy her hair is all the time, you know, <laughs> she's probably into it already. So that's why she liked the robot devil. She was hoping for the elect. I wanted to see that. And I understand this author is probably in middle school and would not be appropriate. And they don't really understand what those things are yet. They probably, <laughs> but, but like, 
like just on its own just death of the author like i like that was the only thing that was coming to me that had any tension in it whatsoever is like what is it gonna be like for her to fuck a robot you know and and i don't think we're gonna get that now i mean now the only hope we have is that fry somehow wins her back and maybe there's some kind of story there but he's just doing nothing i'm it's hard to make you you're right i can't maintain this bit because the story <laughs> lost lack of with the lack of robot sex you made it five and a half chapters before breaking down that is some solid commitment right there <laughs> well um, they had me i wanted to this is just like harry potter it's like i had to know why snake trusted dumbledore i just had to or <laughs> vice versa I had to know why Dumbledore trusted Snape. I just had to know. And then it turned out to be like the dumbest thing ever. And I was just like, wow, I read seven books for no fucking reason. Okay. That's how I feel right I, now. I feel wrong. I literally don't even remember what the reason was. It was he that bad. Lily. He loved Lily. That he was it? Lily. Yeah. That was the reason. Pretty much it. it, it it's almost annoying because they're like, oh, it's so sweet that she... I'm like, he was still no, an asshole. Like, also, right. it's super pathetic. Like, and get creep. over it. Yeah. Like, it, it's like, very sincere, right? His Patronus changed to Lily's Patronus after she died, and that's how Dumbledore knew that he truly loved her, right? But it's like... I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean... It's still... <laughs> still robbery and then they just kill him off right like it doesn't even mean anything after that he dies right after you find that out and it's like nothing i just love that he names his children he just takes the names of uh of dumbledore and uh snape and just gives them to his son like imagine if i had a kid and i just took the names of my two best friends which by the way are a girl and a boy so, in either case, if I go, Daniel Carly Novak. No matter what the gender of the child is, that sounds fucking awful as, like, a, a full name. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what was it? Alvis Severus Potter? Alvis Severus Potter. Like, dude, go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Then they made that stage play, The Cursed Child, which was like Albus was like the main character. You don't that that doesn't that's the worst fan fiction of all. Coming soon to back reading. I have not. I didn't. Read it was that actually one. written by J.K. I, I know, but but it, it was a terrible author. She is about on par with Bobeka over here. So <laughs> why? Be, because she's transphobic. Yeah. No, don't, she's don't... committing highway robbery. Okay, oh. like they're both just robbing me. Of the of the reason I was reading and tagging along to this story forever. Forget her transphobia. She just robbed me of a like a payoff for her story, okay? <laughs> and she shipped these characters with no chemistry, and then they just end up married. What the hell is that? Come that, on now. That's how you know you have a true fan right there. Like, look, I can separate the art from the artist. You <laughs> suck. <laughs> All right, let's finish There's this up. There's a lot of other problems with uh, with Harry Potter. Like, they named the one Asian kid in school Cho Chang. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> which is not an Asian name in any in any language. <laughs> Maybe uh... the one Irish kid constantly blowing things up. Like, it was, no, there was some and His issue. name is Seamus Finnegan, the most Irish name ever, Seamus Shame, Shame Finnegan. Exactly. I come from the Emerald Isle to learn magic. All right, I'll stop doing that. Um, <laughs> okay, so Fry, uh, Bender, and Leela are in space, and Bender looks at Leela and says, so how are you going to explain that you're now... Uh, wait, how are you going to explain that you're now taken to Bran again? Leela sighs. Wait, wouldn't she not have to explain anything? Didn't he already know that she was dating Fry? I mean, even before she was dating Fry, she was just like, I hate you, Zap Brannigan. Get the fuck away from me. Like, yeah, it's not hard. Uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be. She doesn't have to be defined by a man. Just let her be single or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, so. maybe in the in the previous story that Bill Becker wrote, she shipped with Zap and now there's chemistry between them, two. Okay. It could be like a, like a team Jacob, team Edward situation going on here, you know? vomit um that's a the lila line right there lila size uh uh 
I don't know. I guess I'll just tell him directly. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I'll just tell him directly. I finally found it. There yeah. it is. It's right this <laughs> smack dab in the middle of the screen. <laughs> Fry says, he'll probably not leave you. Believe you. Fuck. He'll probably not believe you. I'm I'm good at reading. Uh, Leela looks at Fry and... There, though, when you said he'll probably not leave you, I was like, wait, what? What's going on? Is there a twist? But yeah. no. What a no. twist. <laughs> no, no twist. Leela looks at Fry and nods, saying... You're right, but what else can I do? Once they reach Brandon's ship, they go aboard and see Zap talking to Kiff, who says, uh, you, you want to be Kiff? Sure. Struff. Hi, Struff. Um, sir, your delivery is here. Zap looks sir. up. Sorry, I what? just wanted to see if I could do it, but I can't. I can't do any impressions. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, Zap, I... Zap looks over at Fry, Leela, and Bender. Ah, the wondrous Leela. How I've missed you. Leela groans and says, I'm now dating the robot devil's app. <laughs> <laughs> so she she just went and did the I I have a boyfriend fuck you I have a boyfriend, <laughs> which you shouldn't have to do. It's just like if you say no, there was no con no. like what like how's your love life or anything like no no it's just uh, like hey I mean, do you want <laughs> it is Zap Brannigan he is constantly coming on to Leela I guess that kind of makes sense but. <laughs> believe there's some body language going on that was not put in the story you know are we just supposed to assume that he he walked up and put his arm around her shoulder when he talked to her like i hope so the only way to make it work really really what proof do you have to support this fry sighs and says well she left me (laughs) uh zap laughs and says that doesn't prove that she's dating the robot devil Kiff groans, and so does Leela, who says uh, while handing the man his package. Oh, is this Leela or Le- Kiff? It's Leela. Okay. Look, here's your package. Ooh, that sounds... <laughs> there's an innuendo there. I like that. That's how, that's how so many porn start. I'm really... I mean, I'm back in. Okay. <laughs> Fry pulls out a clipboard, uh, holds it out to the man saying, sign here. Zap takes the uh, clipboard, signing his name on the paper attached to it. Bender says, well, that's taken care of. And that's the end of Chapter 6. Um, I think we're going to stop here. But if you want to... S- yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I was waiting to see the package get unpacked and all sorts of stuff. I was really... That was a fantastic story. I'm going to defend it. Okay. Till the <laughs> okay, well, if you want to see the last uh, four chapters there... Again, in the show notes below. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to the Bad Reading Podcast. Heather Road, thank you again for coming on. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, my... Where can people find you out there on the interwebs? Um, my Instagram handle is Real Life Pretend Psychic, and um... that's a cool <laughs> handle. Yeah. You, I, yeah, that's when I was a homeless street performer. I used to use that make money any is my um, whole shtick but um any like also, underscores or anything or is it just real life pretend psychic all the words real life pretend psychic it's all one word got it um and then i got a show coming up um on september 24th it's uh the hot medusa comedy show it's put on by flappers um so the link to get tickets is in my bio at Real Life Pretend Psychic on Instagram, so you can get tickets right through that me- that mode. I hope that was clear for people. It's going to be a great show. Uh, Aparna Nantrill is on it, so she's, you know, done stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't, all, I'm also doing New Ha Ha Horizons on the 26th of September, which is like a Animal Crossing show that's put on by uh, Stab TV. Um, which stabs like a local venue here in Sacramento, and they're they are doing things virtually now because of reasons. Um, and so those are some some shows you can check out if you if you listen to this podcast in time. And if not, then you're just gonna have to see what else I'm up to by the time you've heard this show. Yeah, you'll have to you'll have to follow her on Instagram, Real Life Pretend Psychic. Chris, how about you? 
stolen underscore relic twitter and instagram also look at scruffle kerfuffle on twitch and uh, youtube if you want to watch me gaming a little bit although uploads for there will be slow for a while because COVID. Uh, because I'm also, COVID and other things. <laughs> I'm also on the YouTube. You can just look up Heather Rogue and find me a bunch of other places, you know. Mm -hmm. But not on Twitch. I don't, I'm not on Twitch. I don't like Twitch. Twitch Dang. is mostly, like, if, if you, you're not, well, I mean, I, can, I guess there's some other stuff that people do on Twitch, but I mostly see gaming. Yeah. My friends, some of my friends do Twitch. It's fine. I just haven't gotten into it myself, mostly because, yeah, I don't want to do the whole streaming gaming thing. It's too much. I have a sketch show on YouTube, though, called Real Life Conspiracies. And I have a podcast. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I don't want you to find it. Um, but okay, fine. I, I just do it because it's, like, required by law when you're a comedian to have a podcast. So I oh. just do it for tax reasons. I got two but of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, except one of them's for for a trading card game, so that's different. But uh, what, what game uh, a game called Vanguard, and the the show is called Nexus at Night. Um, okay. Most I... most of our fans of Bad Reading are from are fans from Nexus at Night because I plug this incessantly over there. Oh, nice. Anyway, uh, you can find me at Atlas Novak on Twitter, or Instagram, or you can find this show at Bad Reading Pod in the same places. Or, if you want to help uh, support the show and help us produce it, you can check out patreon.com slash badreadingpod. Four different tiers. They're all named after shitty tropes in fiction. And you get stuff like uh, a Discord server and uh, helping us vote on the stories. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Wash your fucking hands. Go watch uh, Heather Road show next week. And also, have a good one night. more thing. What? One more thing. I gotta, I gotta just... Like and subscribe. Add your comments what you think is going to happen. Is Zap going to get Leela? <laughs> Fry going to get her back? Is it going to be her and the robot devil? Like, what are your suggestions? You know, like, like just just throw in yeah. your comments. Sound off in the comments. What do you think that they could have done to punch this up? All that good stuff. And have a good night, everybody.